All right, so here is my first round um, at the Adult Nationals. Well, technically second round, so round of 32. Um, but I had a bye um, against Jacob Zhang, who had a first round um, in the day, earlier in the day. So he probably actually had a little bit of better court feeling than me already. Um, and I knew he was gonna come out quite fast. So you see here right away, um, starts out attacking um, right away, which he actually maintains through the entire game. Um, is quite aggressive um, and puts me under a lot of pressure because I don't find uh, I don't quite find the depth and uh, height on all of my lips yet. Um, I do know that he does tend to like to take his backhands a lot. So you see here three backhands already. Um, so the backhand corner was definitely um, a point of um, or an area that I really targeted to really either get myself out of trouble or to get him to just play passive knowing that um, he'll be taking the backhand. Here we go with, uh, oh, this was the point I remember. So the line judge made the call like five seconds after the, the shuttle hit the ground. She saw it hit, it was close. It was definitely a close call. Um, in my opinion, it was definitely out. And uh, she didn't make the call for a good couple seconds and was like scrambling kind of frantically and then just gave the in. So clearly, in my opinion, she wasn't sure of the call. Um, and in that case, if the umpire wasn't sure either, you know, I thought it should have been at least a let in, in that case. And um, the umpire just said he was going with her call. And I asked him to ask the line judge if she was sure of the call and he just wouldn't let me. So um, I asked for the referee here um, to see, you know, if we were gonna play a let or what was going on, but um, ended up I just, you know, gave away the point. It's fine because it's the beginning of the game, but, you know, it was frustrating, but um, there is a little bit more uh, drama in this match. Uh, you guys will see. Typically in these situations, I feel like if the line judge doesn't make the call right away and they're, like, not sure and hesitating like crazy, the umpire always plays a let. And so I don't know if this umpire has never experienced this, but... Um, I mean, it was just an unusual situation that he still went with her call when she was clearly not sure um, whether it was in or out. So here I'm still trying to explain to the, to the referee that the line judge completely was not sure of the call, hesitated for a couple seconds, then just threw out in what I feel like a random insight uh, when she wasn't sure what the call was. So here, gave the point to Jacob. Um, he's up 2-1 now. Uh, he's up 2-1 now. It kind of throws me off, but you know I know I need to kind of not lose my cool and stay in the game at this point. There he is taking the net early and going for the attack right away, right? So you see he's really, really initiating the attack, um, which obviously is very aggressive, and um, but also does take a lot of energy. So I was okay with this, um, even though I was a lot of a lot, a lot of pressure. Um, I knew that for him to maintain this type of speed and this type of um, offensive aggression was going to be very difficult to do in two or three games. Um, there he is forcing attack, playing all quite quickly at the net. See, there he is, really good cross match. Um, my recovery shot was a little bit flat, a little bit low. Um, and just got punished for it. There he is with the backhand again, right? So now I know that his, from the backhand corner, he's not so aggressive. Um, there he was able to turn and get me on a cross drop, um, but typically he does really just take a passive backhand. So. Um, I knew that was kind of a safe spot for me um, that I would continue to kind of use throughout the game. 4-2 now, he's up. There we kind of get into a rally. Again, my lifts are a little bit low, right? Low again right there, where he's able to attack. Here, here I am, see backhand, there it is. Uh, pinned him in the backhand, um, 
again, I wanted to kind of get into longer rallies with Jacob as well, um, knowing that if I could really focus on staying low and just defending that first one or two big smashes that he wants to win on, um, my chances of winning the rally would be um, pretty good. Just a little bit out, um, caught him on the uh, short lift um, and my straight smash was out. I missed quite a few during the tournament. Um, usually a good good um, way to score for me, but just out by an inch. There he is, right again. Right off the service return, I'm able to get him to take backhand. Um, but here he is, again, really forcing the attack. The lucky point on my end. There he is with a little bit of service deception to get me kind of in a defensive position starting in the rally. I um, was able to get out of it, but there he is with a really good um, reverse slice drop. Right, um, Starting from the beginning of that rally, he already had me kind of scrambling um, and in a defensive uh, spot. So um, I really knew that from my service, he would be giving me a lot of variety and to, that I needed to really focus on um, getting to that first shot of his quite early so that I wasn't um, scrambling and in a defensive uh, position right away. There we go with the backhand first um, and then going into the flag exchange with him, which actually isn't the best idea sometimes because um, he is quite quick um, at the drive game and he does like that exchange. Um, I think there's a few critical points where I pressure his body um, and he's able to get out of it. Um, and so I do try to stay away from that. See, there he is again with a little bit of service return deception right away that got me um, a little bit off balance. So from service return, or from service alone in the beginning, I was already a little bit un un uncomfortable um, just because I wasn't quite sure what variety he was giving me from the service return. There we go again, straight to his backhand, right? To get into the rally, really good cross match. Um, I mean, these winners are really good shots. Um, nothing I really could do there. Um, but I knew that I was playing the long game and for him to continue to hit those through, you know, full match, or, you know, maybe potentially a three game match um, was tough. Very lucky net roll. Um, this is where it can get a little bit slippery because, you know, he's hitting winners, he's getting net rolls, and he's really putting me um, under a ton of pressure. So. Um, I'm getting a little bit frustrated already at this point. Here I am, just trying to really build rallies. See that with the long lift, trying to get into the rallies and show him that we, you know, I do want to rally. But there he is again with the little clip smash, cross clip um, that caught me a little bit um, flat-footed, right? My balance was going a little bit backwards because I thought he was going to clear um, and then just uh, left the return a little bit short at the net. Here he is again, kind of playing at a really high pace, right? The the clears are punch clears. Um, he's cutting off my clears as well, and there I am with another unforced error. So he's at 11 already, pretty comfortable. Um, one net roll, a couple good winners. One, you know, line call that I thought was a little bit delayed that shouldn't, should have been a let. So everything is kind of going his way right now, um, and I'm, you know, trying to find a way to get out of the hole and. Um, get a little bit of momentum, so uh, tough spot right now. All right, so here we go, 11-5, I think he's up. Um, sorry, of the second half of the first game. Right to the backhand, right? Serves return turn straight to his backhand to see if I can get into the rallies. There we go. One good straight smash winner. Um, you know, I can't continue to give him opportunities to continue to attack because he has shown me that he does have enough power. Um, and he can't hit some winners, so um, I needed to at least show him that I'm also um, going to play an offensive game and not only let him um, kind of play his um, attacking game. It's a good hold by him. Saw so with a little bit of a slight deception at the forehand return there. He held it a little bit before um, putting some pace into it into my forehand um, back corner. Straight to the backhand again and then pressuring the body. Somehow he's able to get out of that and hit a good winner. Um, frustration building even more here, right? Um, from what I felt I should have scored there, 
somehow he's able to get out of it and hit a perfect winner. So, um, you know, it's just tough when the opponent is feeling um, that good and able to get out of points like that. Great serve right there. Front court deception. Um, again, I'm in the defensive right now. He's playing good recovery. Backhand recovery is good there too. He's attacking. A little bit of deception there again. Again, I'm trying to keep the rallies long because I know that I have a better chance um, of him kind of making a mistake. But there it is. Finally, I get a good clip shot. Cross court clip, um, half smash. See, he's always giving me a little bit of deception on the um, service return. Good cross court net. Um, good cross court net by him, but I was able to take it as early as I could and kind of give it a little bit of spin. Um, he had no options there, but it tried to brush. Um, the lift wasn't going to work. There was just too much spin, which is why you saw um, his shot went out. Again, a little bit of a deception by him. Um, his service return is a little bit comfortable right now for him. Um, which I needed to break, right? I needed to find a way to get him uncomfortable off the service return, which I do find towards the end of this game and towards the end of the second game as well, which you'll see. There he tried to steal a quick point from a flick serve, just way too flat. Um, I punished it right away. A lot of times when opponents are building a little bit of momentum and you know they want to steal quick points, you do have to be really careful of those drive serves, flick serves, um, different um, variety of serves for them to try to steal quick points. So there it is again. I took it as early as I could, but somehow again, another 50-50 point, which he's just able to get back into the rally and hit a winner, which I think here I thought it was out. Oh, it was out. Okay, it wasn't that point. So yeah, that was um, a little bit lucky of me to, to get that point because he almost got a winner on me. So that one again, that's the one where I thought it was out also, but the umpire called it in. And I, at this point, am so frustrated and Jacob's just saying he's going with the, with the umpire's call. I'm so upset at this point. And I dropped an F-bomb. <laughs> Oh God, I definitely deserve, I definitely deserve that yellow card. I dropped an F-bomb, so I give him the thumbs up. <laughs> I was so frustrated at that point. Just to clarify, I didn't drop an F-bomb at the umpire. I said it as I was walking away and I dropped it, not directing it at anyone. I was just frustrated. So here I, you know, have to keep my cool because the game could easily slip away if I just let my emotions get the best of me. Um, so there I was able to score right away off of a quick service return, um, caught him flat footed and um, went to his forehand back corner. Here he's pressuring me off of the service a little bit. Again, he just wants to attack, right? See how everything is quite fast. From the backhand, I'm able to get out of it. There, there again, he's jumping for the attack, um, but he got the net a little bit there. Um, he's really forcing the attack again. and. Um, for me, that's fine um, because I know it, it is going to warrant some unforced errors. Lucky net roll. Um, there's more to come, um, but just those are so difficult, especially when you're trying to build momentum and um, your opponent is able to get those. It's so frustrating. A good recovery shot by him. Again, he's just really, really aggressive at this point, right? Um, pressuring with all, all out attack. Even off of service, he again, net roll. So that was tough. Here I'm trying to make longer rallies again. Wear him down a little bit, but he's hitting all all good shots again tries to force the attack again when he's out of position and that's what I'm looking for right I'm looking for longer rallies um, where he's going to continue to try and force the um, attack when he's out of position there I got him with the flick serve um, 
but he's able to get out of this rally somehow too. There he is with the attack, with the good follow. Um, got him a little bit on that one though, right? He went for the drop from the overhead side and um, was a little bit late and I held it a little bit and just went to a cross court lift to his forehand. Um, I knew that the backhand um, corner was open on the service return from a flick because if you'll notice, he does stand not so much centered um, in the singles box. He stands pretty close to that center line. Um, not close to it, but at least a little bit closer than he is um, to the actual middle of the box. Um, and then his right foot uh, is actually pretty far right, as you'll see too, um, which, which lets me know that that back corner um, is pretty open um, on a flick serve. So. Um, I think I do try it a few more times in this game. Here I'm trying to attack a little bit more. Good deception by him at the net. Opens up the backhand though. Here I am with the attack. Um, this first game I believe it gets to deuce also. I think we get to 23-21. And it really comes down to these critical points where I felt pretty comfortable starting from the service. I changed up a lot of my service variety on him. Um, so you see right here how he's standing, his right foot is so close to that center line. Um, it puts him a little bit out of position to get that flick serve. Here again, trying to just stay in the rally with longer rallies, but he's really pressuring with those full on attacks. There we go, right? Just waiting for him to try to hit something out of character. And he was out of position, trying to hit a backhand cross-court clear. Such a difficult shot to hit um, for anyone. And, you know, if that shot doesn't get to that back box, um, you're going to be in trouble. And so uh, it was just way too short. I was able to cut it off for um, a cross drop. So here again, I think this is a one of those points that was giving him a lot of pressure somehow he got out of it and it gets back into the rally and hits uh, a roll and at that point in the rally it's so frustrating because you know I've given him everything and he's somehow getting out of all of it and then hits this winner on me I remember this one so many points in this rally I mean I basically had him in all sorts of trouble and he somehow you know is able to get out of a body uh, shot and return it to flip and clip the net and roll over so huge point um, at this point I think he's had maybe four or five net rolls now um, which obviously for uh, as an opponent is extremely frustrating here we go again um, just focusing on the lift quality um, for my service return right getting getting enough um, distance to the back and height to the back so that he's not comfortable um, hitting a power smash um, you know I want him to try to go for it even though my lift quality is good and there I was able to force him into an air there he is with some deception um, almost had me though um, my serve was a little bit high but again you know he's really trying to force um, the points right now he's really trying to score and um, a little bit impatient, but again, for me, that's fine. Um, I'm going to continue to be patient and know that the longer the rallies go, the better they work in my advantage. Just a little late. Um, again, he's pretty aggressive on the service return. You'll see there, he went at it, attacked it right away, held a little bit at the forehand, and then pumped it to uh, my forehand corner, and I was just a little bit late and behind the shuttle. There I almost got caught again, right? Um, I went for his backhand corner, uh, a little bit short, which gave them the opportunity to jump for it. Um, but I had just enough height on it for him to be a little bit uncomfortable and it forced the air. So a little bit lucky to have um, gotten away with the point there. There again with the flick serve, right? Trying to throw him off. Another net roll. Net roll off of a deception shot, I mean. At this point, it's so tough, right? Your opponent's getting line calls, getting net rolls, and so um, I'm just trying to stay in the rally, stay in the game right now. 
2019 saved game point on that. That was huge. Um, again, also I gave him a little bit of deception and went towards his backhand and saved game point there. So that was huge. Um, so here I think at 20 all, um, I'm changing my strategy a little bit as far as the serve. I don't remember if I flick serve him or I go outside corner on the serve. Um, but I'm starting to give him a little bit of um, shot selection that he hasn't seen yet, as well as making sure that I'm on the attack. Um, so let's see what happens here. So there you again, you know, got him on the backhand side again um, with just a qual good quality lift where he wanted to attack. You saw he kind of hopped a little bit because I think he wanted to jump for it. He wanted to jump to attack me, but he couldn't quite get there just because I really um, got good height and got good depth on that lift. Um, here's 21 all. 21-20, actually, game point for me, and I think he saves this game point. Again, I clipped the net on his... Uh, he got a little net roll there, but we're still in the rally. There he is attacking, full out attack. Um, and I just am able to defend, right? At some times, you just have to just focus on getting the shuttle over, and the opponent um, will feel the pressure. And there, I was just uh, got lucky, right? He made an unforced error on game point at 21-20. So here's the start of the second game. Um, I was just down 19-20 in the first, right? And to be able to save game point, come back and win um, was huge, because now the second game, I have a little bit less pressure um, I can play a little more free. Um, and I felt like he threw a lot at me already, right? Tons of net rolls, um, line calls. And so I felt uh, much better going into the second game. Um, I knew that the key for this second game, though, was taking the net as high as I could. Whether I'm lifting or not, I needed to take the, the net as high as I could. Um, here, just an unforced error. Um, went for the, the back corner um, to push him back off the return, but just a little bit out. 1-0, he's up. Right, backhand corner again. Here I am with the quality lift, so he's not able to attack. And see how I took the net as high as I could there? Right after his drop, I he dropped it over. I took it as, nigh, as, as high as I could. Very simple, just played a straight net. Um, and he was scrambling to come down and slipped a little bit, actually. See, there again, at the net, I'm being as aggressive as I can. Off of his cross net, I took it as high as I could and pushed him to the back. And then from the back, he hit, you know, uh, he really forced a straight smash or a recovery straight, but I blocked it right away and he just had no chance. There again, with a little bit of a net clip. Um, but again, he's going for really big shots. Those are all winners that he's going for. Um, which I'm okay with, right? Because with those type of high risk, high reward shots, also come a lot of mistakes, um, which I know over the long run um, will play in my favor. So again, just focusing on taking it high at the net, letting him make the errors. Um, there we go again. Um, he just went for my forehand and was already ready for it and was able to get behind it and go straight down with a straight smash. There, didn't need to go for that one, right? He, I was already on a roll, he's making mistakes, I'm hitting um, winners and he probably felt pressure to score. So with that one, I probably should have just cleared it and um, forced him to hit the winner on me. So here's what I'm doing, right? Now I no longer am trying to go for the winner, I'm just trying to get into the rally with good quality clears and lifts and um, make him try to score on me. Here he's also not taking too risky of shots. There we high lift and there he is with the forced air right again just focusing on keeping these rallies consistent um, with the high lifts and high clears and making him hit the winners um, I'm okay if he hits a perfect shot because again it's gonna be difficult difficult for him to hit a lot of those right enough to win a game there's one good one right there um, Got me a little bit late on that forehand side. Earlier I had cut one off with a straight smash, but that one I was a little late. So I was able to just um, clear it back to him and he was able to pounce on that and uh, smash right away.
there is the same shot again, right? Got me on the forehand side a little bit late, and I punched it back to the for, uh, to the back, and he was able to straight smash. So um, that's kind of a dangerous com combination. He scored twice on it now. Um, on those forehand, I should probably just play a recovery where I'm able to bring it down somehow. Right, so here. Bring it down. Again, trying to move him as much as I can in the back, but with good depth on the lifts and the clears. Just missed that one by an inch. Here we are, moving him side to side in the back. Um, there I got him pretty good because I was able to get behind the shuttle early. Um, I went up for it, disguised a, a drop and a smash, and instead just punch cleared him um, to the baseline. Um, and he was already kind of in a defensive stance, so you'll see he kind of hesitated and just didn't have a chance to get behind the shuttle there. Flick serve into the attack, which he's able to defend and get out of. And now he's probably going to get a winner. Um, again, just great defense by him. Um, somehow got out of a lot of the pressure I was giving him, and then even off of a pretty deep shot in his forehand corner, he's able to hit a perfect winner. So that was a tough, that was a tough one. He's also flicking there now. Well, good cross, and again, very good attack. Try to break the momentum a little bit with um, shuttle change. Because I knew I needed, I needed a point here, so. Trying to throw, I'm trying to throw off his timing a little bit from his service right here. So, flicked again and attacked again. Really good smash. At this point, I know I need to kind of stay away from the back. Probably, um, he's just hitting really good winners uh, from the back. Straight smashes, cross smashes. He's giving me all all of the combinations right now. So here you see, I know he might try to flick again, so I break his momentum by putting my hand up, and so he doesn't flick. Here I get into the drive game with him though, which probably wasn't the best idea, but um, I got a pretty good quality drive there and uh, forced him into an error. Right, getting up there as high as I could. I just got up to the net as high as I could and took it as early as I could um, and just didn't even put too much crazy spin on it, but um, as long as you're up there as high as you can, it really puts the opponent in a, in a tough defensive position. There he is with a little bit of deception. Um, I thought he was going to net it, and somehow last second he just popped it over my head and um, put me into a backhand, which I had no way to get out of. There, you know, he's trying to rush to serve a little bit, so I tried to break his momentum again there. Might have gotten away with my smash being out there. He took it, but his short, what his lift was a little short. Um, which is why I was able to jump on it um, and pressure him there. So now when you see where he's standing, you see how open the entire left side of the court is on the outside of the serve. Um, and I think I start to go for it a little bit later. There I got it early again at the net, right? Put him into a defensive position in the backhand corner. Um, and then when he played the soft straight drop, took it as early as I could and just pushed it to the opposite corner. Here we go, 11 uh, at the interval, in the second I'm leading. Here I am trying to get into the flat exchange, he's able to get out of it pretty easily. Big smash, but we're both defending quite well. And he just gets me on a good cross-court recovery shot. My lift before that was a little bit short, which is why he was able to get really good angle um, on the second one. Here I am breaking his serves uh, momentum again. Went for the reverse straight drop there. Um, probably didn't need to go for such a tight winner. Um, could have just put it in first, but um, I did go for it because I saw an opportunity. Um, didn't pay off there. There he is taking backhand again, but I forced backhand and he's able to drive back, so. There he is taking it early at the net now. 
high lift to see if I can get him to attack, which he does. Then I punch him back behind him again, and um, he goes for an uncle here. At this point, I also know that I need to really be careful with the flat exchanges because it is something that he is comfortable with. Um, so after two or three, I either try to pump it behind him or to just block and reset into a net or a lift. See, there I go for the outside corner serve now. Uh, another net roll off of a really good defense. I mean, so frustrating. Um, I thought I had the winner on the cross smash already, um, but he just had a phenomenal return there. Um, and then was able to get back into the rally, and I just couldn't quite reach the lift that he did. Good serve. Good backhand. So what happened here was... You see how he's apologizing? What happened was Jacob yelled or cheered before the line judge made the call. So I actually wasn't arguing with the call. Um, what I was saying was I was asking the referee, the umpire, to tell Jacob to not cheer before the line call is made. But the umpire just was not listening. He's like, don't argue with the call, don't argue with the call. Which is why I was so frustrated because this umpire clearly was not listening to me. Um, I wasn't even arguing with the in or out. I was just telling him to um, tell Jacob not to influence the line call. And I'm obviously frustrated at this point, unforced error. Um, I have to keep my cool at this point or else the game can easily um, get out of control. And he's obviously making a good comeback already. Um, and I need to stay, stay calm and um, stick to my strategy. There, he's really forcing an attack when he's out of position. Um, I was in a good defensive position. I wasn't, I wasn't um, scrambling yet or anything. Um, and he just goes for a huge cross-court smash um, winner, which just didn't work. There, he got me a really good service deception. Um, wasn't really focused, I think, at that point. Again, I was still a little bit frustrated with the umpire. Um, but I still need to keep my head cool and kind of focus on every little thing, including service return. Here's a good rally, just making sure that I'm not making a mistake. Let him initiate the attack, which he does right there. Um, and then he tries to follow up, right? So again, making sure that I'm focusing on the big winner that he's trying to hit, just retrieving that and hoping that he's going to make an unforced error. So here I'm focusing on trying to serve, I think to his forehand, because he's shown me a lot of deception with his backhand. So if I serve to the T, he'll give me some deception. But, oh, actually flick him here. Here he's pressuring again. Too flat. Um, my, my clear was just way too flat. He was able to bring it down right away. Um, needed much more height. I didn't really need to put so much speed on it. Um, but I just needed much more height on that so that he couldn't just cut it off right away. And that one is a little flat too. But she was able to just punish right away. And this one is that one. Here I got him to the backhand. I'm just moving him as much as I can. Right, nothing special, nothing fancy. Just waiting for the shuttle to come up. And then I went for a straight stick smash. Straight half smash, which is quite effective um, with some angle, right? I didn't put too much power on it, but I went more for angle um, and steepness, which uh, worked on, on that one. So these flats are actually decent, right? He was able to get out of it very easily. Again, steep stick smash. Missed the follow-up. So I went for the stick smash, which worked. Drove him, and then he tried to get out of it with a short lift. Um, and I just missed the winner right there. So now he's flicking a lot, which I'm already aware of because he's been doing it quite a bit. And I'm just making sure when he does flick that I'm pressuring it and bringing the shuttle down. Wow, what a save. I don't know how he got that last second, but good thing I was still ready. I was, I, yeah. So here I went to the service to the forehand this time because I knew he has de deception with the backhand. Shuttle's broken now, I think. I just saw a feather drop. Um, so I wanted to keep the shuttle down and continue to pressure him. 
And there we go. Took the net as early as I could on his re-net, brushed, um, and then on his return just played the cross net, which I knew he was out of position to get. So um, didn't play anything too risky there. So here I have 17 now. We're getting close to these criti critical points again. Outside corner serve. There we go. And then he went for the big winner again. Um, I think this is where I start changing a little bit and going really for um, the outside corner serve, which w became really effective against him. So you see how he's standing again also really close to that middle line, which opens up that outside corner serve to his forehand. Which let's see if I take advantage of. Yep. Went for that. Went for the forehand side on the service, but tried to re-net. Just didn't work out there. Again, went for the flick again, um, which I'm already kind of aware of, and so at that point for him, it's 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 really difficult to continue to flick serve if I'm already ready for those.